You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey, Star Wars fans and action figure collectors, very, very excited to show you this new addition to the vintage collection. It is VC318 Kanan Jarrus from Star Wars Rebels. And I think this is only the second figure on a Rebels card that we've had. Um, not including the, the Zed, because he was in a deluxe box, but... Uh, it's it's kind of hard to believe it's been this many years and we're finally getting a, a good articulated three and three quarter inch Kane and Jarrus. It's, uh, yeah, been, been a good 10 years since those Rebels figures started coming out, which is hard to believe. And, uh, yeah, with the addition of the Ghost, the Hazlab Ghost later this year, we're going to have the sort of season three and four variation of Kanan. So it's very nice to have the season one iteration or season one and two iteration of Kanan. So BC 318. Still think it would have been cool to share the original figure, the original Kanan Jarrus in the Rebels line, but that's all right. Nice image of Kanan there. So let's bust open the figure and take a look. All right, guys, here is Kanan Jarrus. Wow, this is a good figure. I'm just going to come back a little bit further here. There we go. This could end up being very well one of the one of the figures of the year for mine, at least. But just you know, very early first looks. I'm really loving the look of this guy. He looks fantastic. We're going to look at his accessories he comes with. He has got his blaster pistol, which I've always enjoyed the given him the same one that Luke Skywalker uses in Jabba's Palace in Return of the Jedi when he's uh, about to go down the Rancor Pit and he uses the Force to grab one of the blasters. It should indeed fit in the holster there very nicely. We've got his lightsaber hilt, which looks pretty decent. Maybe a little on the small side. I'm actually going to do a little comparison with his uh, original three and three quarter inch action figure from 2014 towards the end of the review. So stay tuned and we'll do a little bit of side by side. But um, yeah, that pegs on nicely onto his belt. So that looks good. We've got his uh, lit blade here, which again, this is uh, this isn't the first time it feels a little small. Just the uh, the mold of it with the hilt and the blade. The blade's fine. I miss the old little flared look they had at the base of the blade there, such as uh, this one here, you know, that sort of flared bit there. We'll take a look at that afterwards. <clears throat> um, yeah, and around the emitter, there's quite a bit of paint missing. It's just you can. Almost if you hold up a light behind this thing, you'd be able to see the blue through a lot of that. It was just sort of looking at it. There is quite a lot of missing missing paint. It just hasn't gone on properly. I spoke about it a little bit with the Ezra review I did yesterday. Um, but yeah, this one's not that great, I'll be honest. Um, so this one might be uh, swapping out with the, with the OG, but that's all right. If that's one of the slightly downgrades of it, uh, it is what it is. But yeah, the rest of the figure looks absolutely elite. Look at the uh, head sculpt here. That looks pretty, pretty bang on, in my opinion. It looks really, really nice. It's um, very much how I picture a real life Kanan. Don't know whether my brain's playing tricks on me or whether there is a little bit of bit of Freddy in there. Mr. F Mr. Freddy Prince Jr. I'm not sure. Whether they've used that for some inspiration on getting that sort of true to life 
sculpt happening. I'm not sure, but it looks... Might be my black brain playing tricks on me, but uh, yeah, I feel like there's something there. Could be just me. What do you think? Um, yeah, the rest of the thing, like I, I spoke about with Ezra, the, the colours of what they did with the characters in Rebels really made them pop and it worked. Still sort of that utilitarian look. And he's got this sort of mustardy yellow. And then the nice sort of metallic green of the armour plate on the shoulder and, and throughout the arm. The paint applications really sort of shine here. A symbol on the side there. That looks good. I just love that look. That sort of off-center sort of armor look. I think it looks nice. The belt looks good. Separate piece. And the holster looks good too. This sort of silver elements on the buckle painted on nicely. A little bit of brown missing on the bottom of that chest belt there, but that's all right. It's not a big deal. This sort of a grey blue, mostly grey to the trousers. It's a little feel like there's a little blue tinge in there. And yeah, then the, the sort of fingerless gloves, and that one has the armor plate on it, which is cool. And then the boots, which are really nice too. Uh, Articulation-wise, he's got the, uh, the double barbell in the top of the neck there. Has ball hinges in the shoulders, ball hinges in the elbows. Real good range of movement. The ball hinge in the wrist, that one is an up and down. And so is that one. So no in and out hinges on those wrists. There is a swivel. There is a ball socket in the torso there. Ball and socket in the hips. And it swivels at the top of the thigh there. We have a ball hinge in the knee. Giving him a good range of motion there. And then we have ball hinges in the ankles and a rocker in the feet. Just to get those nice stances. And now we'll do, do a little peg test. I did have to put him on here beforehand. Three different sizes on the pegs. Um, yeah, not the shallowest of peg holes there. I think they could have gone a little bit deeper. So I'm actually going to try this on the small one. Which is I think the one I got it on before. So it's a, you know, for those little snug little pegs. Some, usually it's the sort of daintier sort of style figures that need need that small little peg. But yeah, it works for this one. If you're feeling so courageous as to get a, a little drill bit and bore out the holes a little bit more on the feet, you could get them on that second, second size peg there. It's just for... Just for the purpose of the review, we'll take a look. Yeah, it really doesn't want to go on that one. It's those holes are just not, not deep enough, sadly. But yeah, let's do a little bit of side by side. Let's bring in 2014 Kanan Jarrus. You know, very, very much in his animated style there. And I, the main reason I wanted to do this is for the lightsaber. So we've got the lightsaber hook blade lip blade here and there's a little bit of see-through with the with the blue throughout the hilt but it's also a 10 year old figure but let's go side by side and yeah oh you know what is oh, okay yeah you go end to end there's a bit of bit of difference there yeah the new one's definitely a lot smaller i do have the uh kanan in stormtrooper disguise with the lightsaber as well so I may do that swap, give give the TVC Kanan the, the nice, nicer feeling lightsaber hilt. I think it just, it might end up looking a little bit better on the figure, to be honest. I think that looks, yeah, that does look better. But yeah, fantastic figure all over. I'm really happy with Kanan. Really excited to uh, start getting into the Rebels. 
with the ghosts coming out at the end of the year. Yeah, really looking forward to see more, more Rebels figures, hopefully. We we'll do absolutely adore that series. But yeah, I'd love to hear you guys and what you think of this one. Let's get the old, old and crusty in there. Still good. I still love those animated figures. They were definitely of the time. Yeah, probably don't hold up too great, but you know, thankfully we've got a lot of a lot of strong Rebels fans out there that are, you know, sparked the uh, the three and three quarter inch come to life in in the vintage collection. So it's awesome. All right, folks, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again for another review real soon. Until then, may the force be with you always.